nuts. What we're doing is ridiculous. So we got a call for a trail hawk that is stuck way out on the Arizona Strip south of Elbow Canyon in some of the ruggedest country in the lower 48. Oh, somebody asked me what the lower 48 means because they were from like New Zealand or something. Nobody knows. We also got another call and this is for a minivan that is out in a similar location, like in the same area, unbelievably. We're gonna be sending Hefe and his crew down there to get that one. We're going down to pick up a minivan that broke its oil pan or something and haul it into Mesquite. Me and my crew are gonna be going down to get the Trailhawk. It's supposed to be a horrible trail. We have two options, going the awful side that's short or the long roundabout easier way. We're going in the hard way. We were told it's impossible and that brought the gambler out in me. So we're leaving the yard right now. We're gonna head down to Littlefield. We're gonna meet back up at the gas station, grab supplies and fuel, and then head out into the rugged, rugged wilderness. That's right, we're getting fuel before we leave. <laughs> and we have the keys. So today we're gonna do the impossible. We do that every day. Uh -huh. Every day. Today we're doing the impossible again. All right, we loaded up and left the yard and Peanut wasn't having it. Here, Peanut. Look at the camera. She was not having us leave without her and she stowed away and we caught her. And then she looked at me with those puppy dog eyes cause she literally has puppy dog eyes. So I did something I never do. I put the middle seat up, lost my armrest, traded it for a peanut. This is gonna be a day for sure. Oh, Peanut loves you. Oh yeah, I know. The problem with Peanut is she never stops moving and trying to lick your face. She doesn't just sit still. She's not a lap dog. She's everywhere. We got Team Trailhawk over here trying to butt in on our video. Team minivan. We're only going out to recover cool rides, minivans. All right, so we're fueling up right now. We are over, where are we at? Littlefield, Nevada. Uh, we're going to go recover a minivan that's somewhere out there. I'm guessing it's that way. Out in that region, beyond the palm trees. We are fueling up right now. Matt's fueling up. Trying to keep everybody alive. Just looking at if I should get um, original teriyaki. Greg, you look like you need this. <laughs> All right, we're all fueled up. We got our snacks, we got our treats. This is where we leave Hefe and Team Minivan. Go Team Trailhawk! Yeah! Trailhawks! We're going up over those mountains. Right there, that's where we're headed. Bye Team Minivan. We definitely have the cooler team name. Oh, by far. Minivan. We have a mascot too. This is our Trailhawk. So we just parted ways, Matt got off the previous exit, but we're heading down another 20 miles. We're gonna go through Bunkerville and hopefully avoid a bunch of dirt road because all of our tires are at like 60 PSI. It'll be miserable driving down a dirt road for a very long distance. We don't wanna change them because we're gonna jump back on the highway and we don't have an air pump with us. Probably a mistake, but we do have spares. This is also going to be a really good test for the trailer that Colby and I repaired and Tom. Uh, so we'll see if it all stays together on this trip. Good luck, Matt. Okay, we got a couple of mountains in front of us here. So we're going to go around this first one, in between that next one, and wind up in between this third one. I've never been here, but I've heard that this road is impassable and impossible. He came in from the top side, so we're cutting about 65 miles out of this trip. So if we find a good place to turn the trailer around anywhere in the next mile or two, we'll pull off the road and unload and go about our business. What do you think of this place? Getting excited. Are you ready to get out? It's gonna launch. Starting to do a little math in my head to figure out how we're gonna get all the people in the truck. Plus peanut. How's that going? I'm kind of ignoring it. Two seats, four people, one dog. Beautiful weather though. We find ourselves in this situation a lot where I'm unfamiliar with the area. I've never been on this road. I've never been up that canyon. We know that we've had some really bad weather, like a lot of rain and, and roads are washed out. The customer says how terrible it is, like it's impassable. And they may be right, but we just don't know till, till we get up there. So we're gonna find out in the next few minutes if this road is impossibly impassable or if it's not really that bad.
You're seeing some things you haven't seen before. So we have ramps and traction boards. And the reason we have that is because we know this is gonna be crazy rough and the Trailhawk is basically a car with a two inch lift. I wanna come back out this way really bad. It's very short, it's like seven miles versus 70 miles. So we're bringing some bridge building materials. I'm gonna say something very controversial here. If you used traction boards to get yourself out, you were never really stuck in the first place. And I know there's exceptions, but I'm talking about 99.999% of the time. Traction boards got you out, you weren't stuck. Comment below if you disagree with me. <laughs> we do need this strapped up right there with a mat strap. Okay, that is held in there. So we're heading to Arvada Springs and we're meeting Leroy there and he has the keys. It's supposedly a little town down here, a little compound of some kind. I have never been out on this part of the Arizona Strip. The Arizona Strip is huge. It's the strip that lies between the Grand Canyon and Utah. That's everything on that area is called the Arizona Strip. But we'll go see if we can get these keys and get this man out. I think this is the last time we're seeing pavement, so it's gonna be a bouncy road. We have about 24 miles to get to Aravada, and this road is bumpy. We're doing about 35 miles an hour, and we're getting bounced all over the place. GPS says we'll be there in an hour and 15 minutes. It's probably right. <laughs> I just hope we don't blow a tire or something. Primitive road, caution, use at your own risk. These services are not regularly maintained. Rough road, four wheel drive, recommended or a minivan. The road just got worse. We're heading up through, a, it looks like a canyon. We're stuck doing around 10 miles an hour now. I hope Matt's road is a little bit nicer than ours, <laughs> but I doubt it, because all the roads out here are bad. I really hope we are taking the right way, because it does not look like there's anywhere to turn around. We've still got another 16 miles to go, and this is rough. Dude, are you seeing this? Yeah, it's starting to look like a river, like a dried out riverbed more than it is starting to look like a road. Well, uh, check this out. So Hefe was like, look at this trail. It kind of looks like it goes into a cave. Let's see what we got. Dude, this is sweet. Whoa. I want to find the tightest spot and get stuck. This is a cool little pit stop area. <laughs> pit stop. Uh, we are just on the trail and we found a cave. Look how steep this is to climb down in here. You can kind of see we had to do some traversing. Right Be careful, Hefe. This is one way to get down. All right, so the problem is we've got two seats on the inside, but we have a whole bunch of seats on the outside, so I guess it's not a problem. <laughs> got a place for a dog? Yeah, Peanut's gonna have to ride right there. Or she can ride on my lap. You wanna ride on my lap? I think I've reached that age where I'm being ridiculous about my dog's comfort. Yeah. You're there. Yeah, this water just appears straight out of the ground. So Peanut just took a good dip in the pool, so she's all soaked up and ready for her run. We're about two miles away from the customer. We're driving pretty slow. We're Less than five miles an hour. It's good dog pace. I don't think we're on the road anymore. Can we leave it? Yeah. No, that's... I think you're right. So the road is starting to deteriorate. Look a little bit more like the customer said. It's getting rougher and it probably will from here all the way to his vehicle. We're about a mile and a half away. Okay. Oh, look at that. 
look at this. Definitely more primitive. We well, got a little bit of work to get that out of here. Yeah, it's not gonna be real fast going. If they took their minivan up this, I wouldn't even be mad. I'd be impressed. Okay, so we're at a really gnarly spot. This is probably where they broke their oil pan. The truck is bottoming out and I have a two inch lift on it. So that'll let you know how tall these rocks are. So Rhett and Jake are gonna guide me up through here. We're gonna see if we can get past it. Hopefully we can get into some better roads. I can't see a minivan going up this. I just can't see it. How's it going? Back up a little bit. How much worse does it get up there? This is the worst this spot. Okay, I guess we got a minivan somewhere up there. We're going to get out. Okay. Like, how did somebody bring a minivan up here? Because yeah, they probably went the other way. Is there another way in? We probably took the wrong way. <laughs> So, before we left the yard, I showed Matt a map of where Google Maps was trying to take us to get out here to this point. I did notice while we were driving that Google Maps was like, faster route found, and changed it halfway down. So we are now not on the right road. There's no way that this was the trail that Matt told us to take. This is a four wheel drive trail. So we're just creeping along nice and slow, hoping not to pop a tire or break something. Hefe told me we'd never go rock crawling in his truck. Now we are. Not because we chose to. Thanks, Google. Our job's not going as planned. I wonder how my dad's job is doing. I hope he's doing better than us. So we've just blew in, uh, our second airline. We must be getting some crazy under hood tents, which I wasn't expecting because there's no sides to the hood. Yeah, these hoses are just getting blasted hot. That popped right out of there. Think you can push that back together? I don't know how After that. After it cools off? Yeah, it actually like heated the it. insert. Like yeah, pulled it out of the, the insert. These wires are just blasted hot. They're just too just close to them headers. We've got to get them headers. Just wrapped. We need the new set on. Wrap them. I've had several comments that we should be using cast iron manifolds, and I would. I totally would. The problem is, is they're too close to the motor and the outlet's clear back here, which would mean I would be into the cab further. Yeah, they're totally I, the wrong shape. I wonder if we could get a reverse one. We need one that kicks out though. They oh. all they all kick in. But if we did Hang a cast if we did a cast iron manifold, we got a, this wheel gets into here pretty close. That is unbelievable. That is putting so much heat into that frame. These slow hill climbs. Yeah. This is the conditions. It's not that hot out here and there's air movement. I'm still baffled. These are out in the open air. They're not like, it's not like they're trapped under a hood. There's a definite reason they're coming apart. They're too hot. So this is what came out of there. It just got hot enough to get soft enough to release that. And now I've just got to push it back in there. Okay. So that's pushed back in there. That's Push back in there. I don't feel like we're really pushing it. I don't know what we could do to slow it down. Okay, well, let's. We'll gotta get to them. When we turn around, it'll all be downhill and it'll be a lot easier. We're about a mile away. 1.2. Yeah. Yep. Okay. We're not far. Okay, let's go. There's nothing we can do but go. GPS says we are getting really close, 0.1 miles, so we should see them anytime now. I'm starting to think this is the same road we did 
the job with the banana and getting the razor. Oh, here we go. I think this is Elbow Canyon. And here he is. All right, Matt, how do you feel about doing the impossible? You did it today. We did it. I think we're gonna get this right out of here that way, no problem. There'll be a few problems, but we'll fix them. I think it's lunchtime. I agree. We're gonna grab some lunch and then we're gonna turn around and we're gonna do this. Okay, so this is a pinion pine tree and they have pine gum and when you find it hard like this, it's almost like a nut. You can chew it and it, and it ends up like chewing gum. The biggest problem with it is this. For the first two minutes, it crumbles into dirt and it tastes like turpentine. So if you can get past the first two minutes, then it becomes incredible. It sounds really enticing. Nine out of 10 people spit and retch and complain about it for the rest of the day. And then there's one weirdo that'll be like, oh, that wasn't that bad. Trust me, it was that bad, but it's worth it. Well, I'm not the one out of 10. Tell me, tell me what it's like. I want to experience it. It's awful. Here. Here's another pain. Oh, that's some? Mm-hmm. Restart my clock. <laughs> oh, this is bad. It just crumbles to pieces. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's like eating a graham cracker that tastes like turpentine. And dirt. Now, if you have a tapeworm, your tapeworm's dead now. Oh, fantastic. It's a dewormer, huh? Mm-hmm. It is like gum, but it still tastes bad. Mm-hmm. I never said it tasted good. I was I was waiting for it to go like spearmint flavor. <laughs> it ain't gonna. It's gonna go less like dirt. Why are we eating it? Because it kills tapeworms and pinworms. I didn't have any worms. And hookworms. Well, I didn't know that. Thank you. <laughs> I can't believe you did it. This is not a Willy Wonka moment with the, you know, the gum that changes. Full yeah. dinner. I'm gonna turn into a big blueberry. Help! Worst gum ever. This part's awkward because I gotta show you something that I've been chewed on in my mouth. Some of you might find this interesting. If this kind of thing bothers you, avert your eyes. There it is. It's gum. Just like gum you would chew. Like mm. if there was some sort of organic homeopathic gum. That's what it's like. Just like gum, but it tastes awful. The worst gum ever. Let me tell you how it ends. It'll be just like this. It'll get slightly stiffer. And then one time you'll bite on it and it will shatter in your mouth. And you're like, you gotta spit it all out. And it's like everywhere. It's done at that point. Mm -hmm. You can't reconstitute it. Can't wait for that. So I'm up here laying in the road. I'm see if it's part of this Jeep. Kid plate up there. I think it's up this. Yeah. Yeah. It's a plastic pan. Super good idea on an off-road vehicle. <laughs> Must have taken a pretty good hit. Hey, peanut. Automatic transmissions like this should not be ran without fluid. So the engine shouldn't be running, and you also shouldn't flat to them, even if they have fluid. You shouldn't flat tow them. I don't know of any modern transmission, automatic transmission, that has a pump on the output. So it's basically the, the bearings that are high in the transmission don't get any oil. We've got about seven miles to get this out of here. The only way to get this out is going to be flat tow it out. We're gonna be dragging it out. This is one of the situations where it is what it is. We gotta get it out of here. We're gonna to try to get it out of here with the least amount of damage, but we're gonna be doing something with the transmission that the owner's manual says you shouldn't do. Let's see what it says about flat towing. It's not gonna say anything about flat towing with a, with a hole in the oil pan. Well, let's just read what it says. I think we're up on top, so I'm hoping the road gets a lot better now. Cause look at that beautiful view. That's what I was gonna say. We are definitely testing out how good Colby's and Jake's welds are. I hope they hold out. See, I, I do too. I didn't see a ramp laying on the ground when we got done with that. 
that's a good sign. So, we ran into a roadblock. That's a good sign the cowboys out here know that they were expecting us, so they're watching for us. All right, we're in the right area. This is where they said we're picking up the keys. We gotta figure out where this guy is that we're meeting, though. He's somewhere around here. And said you came this way. Yeah. Well, we came in the wrong way. We came in. You didn't from cross that. the line. Oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> oh, you're kidding. <laughs> this is a full service campground. You can rent. There's uh, deluxe cabins up there. Down here below, you'll see that there's six basic cabins. You can rent teepees. There's some miners tents over there that can you you can rent. Oh, the bunkhouse cool. here is part of it. There's a pond. That's probably the striking feature of this place is the, the pond. ATVers just love it out here. So go to aravada.com to book a stay out here. All right, this was a cool, pretty cool place. We got the keys, and now we're heading back the way we came, which wouldn't have been the case if we would have headed the right way. And then we're gonna make a slight right. Um, I'm surprised we didn't see the vehicle, but it's like three miles away should be there in a minute. There's the oil trail. We're getting close. And they are out of oil right here. Right there. So here's what we're gonna try and do. We're gonna try and push the minivan backwards up a little bit and then push it onto the trailer. That way we have a little bit of momentum. If we have to, we'll use the winch. See, we have the key. I need it. Do you think Matt got to his vehicle already? I bet you they already got it recovered. Where's the shifter? Hit the button once, and then... Oh, what the heck? Try again. Try reverse. We're gonna have to go to the manual. Watch out. I'm not steering. Who's steering? Jump in. Brett, I'm gonna guide you as you're going, so just rally it. Alright, driver, hit the brakes. Brake. Okay, good. Brake. Nice. Alright, we're just hooking up to the A-arm so we can use the winch to pull her up on. We're about out of here. The repairs that we did to the trailer seemed to have worked. Tom's winch job did great. The trailer ramps were still connected and they held while the van went up onto it. So I think that our job from last weekend was a success. One of the main reasons why I love mat straps is because they're so universal. Like this, you can use them right just like this, hook them up. You can't get a hook through a tire like this with a regular um, strap. So these are great universal straps for everything and they're very high quality all right let's roll we're all loaded up we're gonna eat lunch on the road because we packed lunch with us this time thank you jamie we're to the road that we should have come in on we're gonna see how much better this road is than the one we did come in on so far it's pretty luxurious Mesquite is right over that hill, so we just got to go down and around it. This so far, this is a way better road. We're on paved road. Now we totally went the wrong way out here. That could have been a really easy commute to go pick this van up, but why? Why do it the easy way? No. We made it the real fun way. It was. <laughs> We have made it back to civilization. We did pretty dang well. Our trailer's in one piece, the car's in one piece. We're doing good so far. I wonder how Matt's doing. I hope he's doing as well. All right, we just checked the manual. It says it's safe to flat tow if we tow less than 30 miles an hour and less than 30 miles. So I think we're seven miles and we're gonna be going about one mile an hour. All right, we're gonna get this turned around and hooked up. We're gonna be using a 20 foot Matt's recovery rope. These are excellent tow ropes because they have some give to them and then lizzie's gonna be picking her own way let's see how the brakes are for a minute here and then we'll have you shut it off i'd like to run the motor as least as possible yeah it's in neutral and it's blinking 
Like it, it should, it's out of fluid. But you need the parking brake off. It is. It's off. Push, push on, let off. So take your foot off the brake and let's it's see off. if it'll roll. No, no, stop. Does it have a neutral? I'm wondering if there's neutral a... Neutral is right there. Is it a... How do you put it in neutral? I don't know. You Turn the key poke on. poke it with a paper clip. I hold it and this red light blinks. Uh, I can hear it doing something down there. Get the owner's manual out again. Turn it off. Let's read about that. For the first time ever, books won out over Lux. So apparently, not only does this have a park and a parking brake, but it has a secret parking pole for just the rear axle. Inside the console, hidden. But we found it. It's right here. So Tom's being modest. He said we found it, but he found it. But I'm actually the one that pulled the tether. So I don't know. I think this is 50-50. Okay, Lizzie, let's roll on out of here. I don't know why cars have to do that. Like, hey, let's make a whole bunch of secret parts. So you see how I'm riding, but, <laughs> but the ground clearance we're getting out of it is worth it in my opinion. Oh, and then when it st starts rolling, turn all the way to the left. So is it just, it's just dying? No power steering, no power brakes on that. Sometimes it runs and sometimes it stops. Checking a spot we found on the whole thing on our way in. So we stacked all of our traction boards in here, trying to make ramps, kind of using them like rocks. You're lined up right on them. Okay. Okay, steer a little bit left, but you're right, you're on it. Perfect. This one's bouncing. Get some rocks up here. I think this will do it. All right, pull me gently. going pretty good it's a little bit tedious but it's going okay I just hope Hefe's job is going nice and smooth okay, we're here at John's truck and auto repair we're gonna go see where they want it okay. nice. despite going the wrong way we got out with no mishaps Matt is just getting done with his job I guess they're loading it up so he'll be about 30 minutes behind us team minivan for the win <laughs> there is no comment
All right, phase one is complete. Phase two is to take this to the Jeep dealership and drop it off. How's that looking under there? Well, it's not going anywhere. I'm so glad phase one is over. I'm ready for the AC. Well, I just heard from Hefe and he's ahead of us. They got their job done and they are back in St. George. So we're about, I don't know, 45 minutes behind them, except for we still got to drop this rig off. So we're going to be like an hour and a half behind them by the time this is over. Everything went really good. Matt continually surprised me why he was able to drive up without any power. He must have really been cruising on the way down. We were, I we know how. Cruising, we were bumping. We were bumping. But I have learned how to break a couple of laws, and one of them is the laws of gravity. Impressive. Impossibly impressive. So we did the impossible today. We got to be pretty happy about that. I mean, it was impossible, and now it's not impossible anymore. Thanks for watching. What do you think, Peanut? How was that job? 